and I'm live. Welcome. Um, this is just the five minute preamble uh, before the show, um, just to make sure that um, everyone sees and hears me perfectly well. <laughs> Miss Mrs. Remember. <laughs> Eric, um, yes, yeah, so a uh, special day for myself and uh, my husband. Uh, 11 years ago today, um, at around about this time, actually, um, we were married um, at a uh, winery um, up on Mount Me called Glengariff, although I believe they call it um, the Ocean View Winery now. Um, it's, um, it's a lovely place. Um, I actually found it with my first husband. Um, and uh, it's a, a beautiful um, estate sort of overlooking a valley um, with an old Queenslander house, um, uh, a very very uh, special place up in the the uh, the hinterland, um, and uh, it overlooks. Uh, you can see the um, you can see the ocean from there. Um, it's a very very special place, um, and uh, we were married. Uh, by um, a radio announcer um, who also doubled as a uh, wedding celebrant. So uh, naturally he had a very, very, very lovely voice, um, Howard Ainsworth. Um, and we did a... Um, uh, uh, I've known Howard... Uh, for years and uh, he actually invited me on his radio show one Saturday morning uh, called Music Lover's Choice and uh, I um, I might even um, send you that link because uh, it's a radio show um, and uh, some of the uh, some of the pieces that are, I'm going to be playing for you today um, are on that show I think um, I've been on radio um, a few times I was really really hot stuff in uh, 1999 um, I did two concertos with um, orchestra um, both recorded live uh, plus I did a um, hour-long radio program as well uh, called um, Young Australia because I was um, part of a, a competition called uh, Young Performers Awards um, and I got through to the instrumental final, uh, the third round, um, and I got to play um, a concerto with uh, the Queensland Symphony Orchestra, um, which was fun. So uh, this is an all... Mozart program. Uh, note the earlier time. Um, this is to cater for people who are further east uh, than uh, those um, on the west coast, so it's not quite so late for you. Um, and uh, everyone loves Mozart. Um, I love Mozart. Um, it's just, uh, I think it's the kind of music that just about everyone connects to, um, just with its sheer beauty. I mean, it doesn't have the complexity of rock music. Um, so, uh, welcome everyone um, at this earlier hour um, of 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it's Saturday morning here, and I'm going to present a program of Mozart, but with a clarinet 
focus, uh, focusing on recordings I have made of uh, Mozart's clarinet works. And then if you want to stick around, um, I have a chamber music piece, which though I have played, um, I don't have a recording of myself playing it, but I have a very special group playing it for you. So, um, Mozart was one of the first composers to write for the clarinet. Um, and he wrote for a fellow by the name of Virtuoso, and he made his own instruments um, by the name of Anton Stadler. And Anton Stadler uh, played um, a special clarinet, um, and you'll see what it looks like um, in the last video. Uh, but he played a basset clarinet and what I mean by that is it had a few extra keys. Now the modern clarinet only goes down to a low E below the stave. But Stadler's basset clarinet uh, actually went down to a low C and Mozart took full advantage of that. Now the Mozart Clarinet Quintet and the Mozart Clarinet Concerto were among the last pieces um, that Mozart wrote ever. Um, but sadly, Anton Stadler managed to lose the manuscripts to both the Quintet and the um, Concerto. So, and then Stadler's Bassett clarinet uh, fell out of use. Uh, so the remaining manuscripts that we the, the remaining manuscripts that we have of the concerto and the quintet only cater for a clarinet that goes down to E. Um, but I have managed through research to piece together how it should sound uh, as much as possible if the clarinet still went down to C and there are many recordings now of people playing on actual Bassett clarinets and I mean they're huge, <laughs> huge things. Um, so the clarinet in Mozart's time looked very different to what it does now but I have a special treat for you before I play the quintet and the concerto. Now this is a, a duet between two clarinets and this is played on a clarinet that was made in 1843. So it postdates Mozart's death um, by about 50 years and there are a few extra keys but it is boxwood, it's a boxwood clarinet um, and uh, Mozart's a lot harder to play when you don't have all the modern keys. So I'm going to play you um, one movement of a Mozart duo for two clarinets um, played on as close as I could get to um, Mozart's, the, the clarinet that was around in Mozart's time. So here we go.
So I hope you um, enjoyed um, that uh, little duo. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how you, if you can appreciate how difficult it is um, to play that music on a period instrument uh, where you don't have all the extra keys. Um, so, um, we come to the Mozart clarinet quintet. Now, what you're uh, going to hear is me playing with a recording. Um, when I was a child playing clarinet, um, my parents bought me an old vinyl LP. Uh, that's how old I am. And uh, it was uh, music minus one. Um, meaning that uh, the piano part or the orchestral part was pre-recorded um, with a clarinet. And then the clarinet part was taken out. So that if you played the record, you could play along and you'd be the clarinet part. And uh, a number of, um, um, I have a number of Music Minus One recordings. They're now either CDs or you can just download them um, straight off the Music Minus One site. So the next two recordings I'm going to play you, the quintet, and the concerto are just me playing along to these music minus one recordings. Um, now, things to listen for in the quintet um, by the classical period, so we're talking 1750 to about 1820, um, they were obsessed with form. And what I mean by that is the pieces had a structure. So it wasn't just random melodies um, churned out ad nauseum. There was a definite structure behind each of the pieces. So um, in the case of the clarinet quintet, uh, we start with a very definite sonata form. And what I mean by that is we have an exposition, which is um, repeated, and then a development and a recapitulation, which are um, repeated. What I mean by that is in the exposition, you have the first subject, um, and then you have a little uh, bridge passage, and then you have the second subject, which is in another key. And then uh, that's repeated. And then in the development, the composer takes little bits of either the first or second subject and um, develops them. And then you come back to, and when, he's, uh, and when the composer's sick of doing that development, um, you then come back to the first subject um, and then bridge passage. And then the second subject comes in, but in the original tonic key, not in um, the key that it is in the exposition. And then the second movement is in a ternary form, uh, meaning you have um, A subject and so A tune and B tune, and then A tune comes back. The third movement is what we call minuet and trio. Uh, it's, um, so a minuet's a dance in 3-4. Um, and a trio, so you have, you have the minuet, which is in two parts, both repeated. And then um, the trio is, um, as suggested in uh, has three voices and then you go back to the minuet and then the final movement is theme and variations um, so that's um, that's the structure of the quintet um, and you can hear that form very very 
clearly. So uh, this is the Mozart clarinet. It's quite an old recording. Um, when I sort of took up the recorder in 2012, 2013, and I finished my master's um, in 2013, um, and then started getting into the early movement, early music movement, uh, clarinet sort of went by the way. So I don't have a lot of clarinet recordings from the last couple of years. So this is quite an old recording. So this is the Mozart clarinet quintet, and you won't so that's Mo so that's clarinet with um, a string quartet, two violins, a viola, and cello. So you won't see the string quartet; they're virtual, they're on a CD, um, and this recording's so old that I'm a blonde. Uh, so, <laughs> so here we go. Mozart clarinet quintet. It's about, um, I think it's about, it's uh, just over 35 minutes long um, and it's bliss. It really is.
So that was the absolutely delightful Mozart clarinet quintet played by me around nine years ago when I was still a blonde um, and quite a deal heavier. Okay, so um, we're now going to go on to the Mozart clarinet concerto, a piece of music that has a special place in every clarinetist's heart. Um, it was the first cassette um, of clarinet playing I got when I was a nine-year-old when I started playing clarinet, um, and it was Robert Marcellus with the um, Chicago Simph. Um, so I got the um, amazing chance to play this with the Conservatorium Orchestra in 1999. Um, I do have a recording of it on SoundCloud. It was recorded live for um, radio. Um, and um, I can send you that link um, if you want or I could put it down in the um, comments. Uh, so um, it was uh, quite an amazing uh, performance. Um, I was only uh, 23 at the time, um, had a crush on, the, on one of the second violinists, so my performance, uh, which was unrequited, um, which um, made my performance particularly impassioned um, and I never did win the heart of that violinist he actually ended up sleeping with my best friend so um, this again is with um, music minus one um, just recorded um, in my studio So, um, oh well, enough talking from me. Let's um, let's hear some music. Thank you. 
Okay, so um, that's the extent of my personal playing um, for this, um, but I do have a special treat for you. Um, this is a piece I have played. Um, I played it in 2000 um, with the Australian National Academy of Music down in Melbourne. 
And uh, if you've watched um, the movie Amadeus, um, you will recognise um, some of the music of this piece. It's Mozart's Grand Partita. Um, and this is a very special uh, recording of it because it's played on period instruments. Um, and what I mean by that is these instruments are copies of instruments that were around at the time of Mozart. So um, like the uh, one I played for you first, um, although that was an 1843 clarinet, um, so these instruments would be um, 18th century, so about 50 years before. Now there's two clarinets, um, two basset horns, um, and what I mean by um, basset horn is it's um, another type of clarinet. Um, you might recall when I was talking about uh, when the clarinet first came about in the classical period, it didn't have a lot of keys. And therefore, it was very hard to play sharps and flats on it because you would have to, you didn't have any keys for it. You'd have to use all sorts of um, forked fingerings. And so they just made clarinets in every key, would you believe? So um, the Mozart, because the, uh, the generally um, the, the stock standard clarinet that everybody plays is the B-flat clarinet, meaning that when the clarinet plays a C, it sounds a concert B flat. Um, and every orchestral clarinetist will have an A clarinet. So when you play a C on that, it sounds an A. And the Mozart Concerto and Quintet are written for clarinet in A. Um, and it wasn't just the fact that these clarinets were made in every key to um, facilitate easier playing. So you're essentially playing in C major all the time. Um, these clarinets also have very different characters um, depending on their key. So the A clarinet is just a tiny little bit lower and richer than the B flat clarinet. Now the basset horn um, and you'll see them in this recording, um, the funny bent shaped clarinets uh, are in F, so they're a fourth lower and they're basset horns because they go down to a low C. So this is um, Ensemble Zafiro playing on period instruments. So um, you've got two clarinets, two basset horns, two oboes, two bassoons, two horns, and a double bass. Uh, so the all of the wind instruments have a lot less keys um, than modern instruments. They're also probably in um, boxwood rather than granadilla. Um, which modern clarinets and oboes are made of. Um, and also the horns are natural horns. Uh, they don't have any valves on them. So um, if uh, you want to change keys, you have to um, stick in a different crook. And also um, if you uh, want to do accidentals, um, on these natural horns, that's where you use your hand in the bell to um, get those extra notes. Um, there's a joke about um, how do you know you're kissing a horn player? <laughs> um, well, actually, it's been winter here since uh, the 1st of June, Eric. Um, as you can see, I'm in I'm in my I'm in my tracky dacks and um, long sleeved shirt. So um, it's quite cool here today, and it's not a very nice day. It's a mucky day actually. So um, that's um, that's right. 
Nancy, um, uh, every yes, um, if you're playing a B flat clarinet, you have to take it up a tone. Um, actually, funny story. Um, when I, I was a very clever kid, um, and um, when I started playing clarinet, um, I was uh, in Sunday school, and I used to play in Sunday school, and um, the lady who was my piano teacher would also have to transpose down and she got sick of transposing down so you know I was like a nine or ten year old I taught myself C transposition in other words sight transposition taking the music up um, and that's a skill I still have uh, but I was ten you know nine or ten years old and I, I taught myself um, so actually uh, I mean, when I was a kid, I was so smart. You know, I was on a par with Patrick and Evelyn, so I would have, um, I would have um, asked Nick some pretty interesting questions too. Um, so that's enough from me. You're going to hear some um, absolutely amazing music. I mean, this is just heaven on earth and it was uh, so amazing to play this music um you know mozart's just so close to god um even though i don't believe in god or heaven um you know so close to the flying spaghetti monster um so uh here we go you're you're gonna really you're gonna really love this
Now, I've played that piece on modern instruments. So um, for them to play them, play that piece on period instruments, um, not just technically but tuning-wise, is just exceptional work. And I'll see if I can find out something about these guys. Give me a second. I'm going to look them up. Um... I'm just going to look up their channel. Amsterdam. Um, Amsterdam's actually a big place for um, period instruments. Um, just give me a second. Um, I'll see what they're about is. 
Okay, um, they've got a website. Um, so let's see. Um, so if you go to Ensemble Zafiro, um, so Ensemble Z E F I R O dot I T, um, let me type that down for you. Um, so this is their website. Now, um, give me a second. Uh, so this is for Nick fans. Um... Give me a second. Okay, just give me give me a second. I've got to show you this um, video. Oh, where is it? Just give me a sec. You'll love you'll like this. Um, Hold on, Patrick. <laughs> um, oh, come on. Um, I'm going to show you that video of Nick with the beard. Because you, you simply have to see this. Give me a sec. Um. Just give, give me a give me a second, because he's got a he's got a um second channel. Okay, I've um you're gonna you're gonna love this. So he, Nick's um Nick's got a second channel which has only got two hundred and eighty five subscribers. Um and I shared it on the um the fan site. Um I shared um, a video of Nick teaching from uh, 1992 on um, the fan site. Um, you're going to love this. So this is this is Nick from 1998 um, with um, his boys on the couch. So he'd be what. Uh, in his thirties. Um, so yeah, you're going to love this. Um, just give me a sec. Okay. I'll get off me. Give me a sec. This is just, this is just gorgeous. Um, he loves his boys so much and they're so cute. This is what the boys look like. Our video has not been working. We finally got it fixed. What's your name? Yeah. And how old are you? Two. And where do you live? Two. What's your name? Two. And how old are you? Four. And where do you live? In Washington. Very good. 
This is hilarious. Hello. What's your name? Max. How old are you? And where do you live? Um, in the piano. In the piano. <laughs> in. Does Max live in the piano? No. Okay. All right. Let's see if this works. But anyway, here we are. Hopefully the camera will not break again. And we will have lots and lots of good footage from this spring. Jack is sleeping right now. Our plan is to take the video camera down to the barber shop this afternoon. They're all different ages. And videotape Jack while he's sitting in the barber chair because his hair is pretty long right now. We want to give him a trim. And yes, I know I have a beard. And I know you think it looks dumb, grandmas. And Sam doesn't like it either. But Max likes it, and I like it, and Mom likes it, and Jack likes it, and Grandpa Carl didn't think it was too bad. But I'll shave it before I visit you guys in June. Okay, well... So yeah, special bonus if you stuck around for that. Um, I tend to keep off his personal channel um because i i need to see him as a as an educator um you know i need to separate that uh so uh yeah yeah it is pretty adorable um he's even got his wedding on there actually <laughs> um yeah so that was um oh hang on i'll just turn down the volume a little bit that was um, Mozart for you. Um, some of it played by me, some of it not played by me, although I have played every single note of that um, grand partita. So um, I'm not going to see you um, tomorrow morning. Um, it's my 11th wedding anniversary today. Um, and in three hours time, I'm driving to, um, the Sofitel. Yeah, um, I'm driving to, the, uh, well, my husband's driving because my husband insists on driving the car when he's in it. Uh, we're going to the Sofitel, which is a swanky five-star hotel in the middle of Brisbane. And we're checking into a luxury room with um, a bottle of champagne on arrival um, and then at six o'clock we're having dinner um, at the Sofitel restaurant um, with Mark's mum. We've been having dinner with her every Saturday or Sunday night um, since I met Mark 13 years ago so that's going to be great um, and then there's going to be lots more champagne and strawberries and oysters I'm not that bad a driver. That's, well, actually, well, I'm a terrible parker. And yes, I have dinged the car a few times in the parking lot at the shopping centre. So, um, uh, so yeah, I'm not going to see you. I mean, it'll, it'll be 2am and I will probably be drunk out of my skull um, and passed out by then. So um, I'll be able to catch the replay um, in the morning. So I've got a great program planned um, for Monday night, uh, which is my Tuesday morning um, when Nick's off. Um, it's going to be Kathy Plays Brahms. And of course, every note will be played by me again. Um, and I will treat you to um, the two Brahms clarinet sonatas, which again were written near the end of his life. Uh, just like Mozart, um, composers tended to die after they wrote for the clarinet. Um, and also the wonderful, wonderful Brahms clarinet quintet, um, which is a simply incredible piece of music. And Brahms never fails to mess me up um, in a good way. Um, I simply adore Brahms. 
Um, and then um, Friday night, um, uh, which is my Saturday morning, um, I will introduce you to another composer who liked the clarinet, and you may not have heard of him, uh, Karl Maria von Weber. Um, and then after that, um, and we'll all be in mourning because Nick will have signed off for the last time for a while, um, I'm going to introduce you to uh, another composer who wrote three incredible sonatas for the clarinet um, after Brahms uh, called Max Rager. Um, and then um, the following Friday, it's going to be um, a selection of my favourite clarinet sonatas. Um, so I have, um, if you've... Um, uh, Weber, Weber was German. Yeah, so yeah, we get another week with Nick. Yeah, but um, so yeah, I've uh, I mean, if you've explored my channel, you see I've got thousands of videos. So there's no shortage of my own videos to show you, and uh, then we can uh, break into my CD collection. Um, you know, and you wouldn't have heard much of this music. Um, you know, I've sort of fairly specialised in in what I like. Karl Maria von Weber, yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, and if you haven't already and you are on Facebook, um, please join um, the fans of Nick Zentner Hangout. Um, I post about half a dozen times a day. Um, I take I take little videos of uh, clips of Nick's shows and uh, put them online. I'm also going to be uploading the entire um, live stream series um, so that um, we can have watch parties on Facebook. Uh, maybe we can have um, watch parties here on YouTube as well, um, if you like. So, um, hope you guys enjoy tomorrow night's, tomorrow morning's, um, live stream. The, uh, sun is just beginning to peek out now, um, here, uh, it's, uh, it's half past 12 in the afternoon here. Um, thank you so much for sticking around um, check out the description of this video which I will update with this playlist um, and I hope you've enjoyed the last two and a half hours um, I certainly have um, hope you've heard some music you've never heard before um, and you've been transported about as close to heaven or the flying spaghetti monster um, as possible. So, um, I'm going to sign off now. Um, it's always hard to sign off because, um, this is the extent of social contact I have. I'm, I'm a little bit of a hermit. Um, but, um, feel free to email me at any time, um, or messenger me or instagram me or twitter me i'm on everything um and uh yeah so i'm going to enjoy um the rest of today with my hubby of 11 years um so glad you've joined me um come back in a few days for some beautiful brahms Bye for now.